G'day guys, Jason here on the other farm. I'm actually on the trial property this morning. What I'll be covering today, we're going to have a look at what we've did to remediate some of that bad pugging we had back to bare soil and how it's going now. And also, I want to go down and do a bit of a pasture walk. Yeah. Can you have the same effect that I'm doing with a high stocking density with only one or two animals? And In regards to, to the pugging, I'll go to this area we haven't remediated yet. So this is directly behind my boar shed. As you can see, it's back to bare soil all the way along this area. That's only a small area. That only be three foot by two foot wide. And this has been remediated. We didn't have any hay mulch at the time. We had cane trash. We buy that in a four, by, four foot by four foot bale and we use it around our fruit trees. It would have been good to have some roads grass or some fodder of similar pasture rolled out there because then you get the advantage of the additional seeds from that hay but we'd never had any and we wanted to get it covered over so what I got what I got Nick to do I was away at the time is I got her to hand feed or hand spread some budget seed mix there's about 10 or 12 different types of seed in there so she spread that around over this area before she put the cane trash down and if you have a look have a look how much seed has germinated. And that, oh, that's only been 12, I'd say 12 days ago. So we'll give you feedback on this. We'll come back in say a month's time. I'm not gonna let them graze this area. I'm gonna let it, this seed take it to the soil, get a good root system. So we'll probably miss this for the next two grazes and then I'll let it lightly graze it as I put them through again. So it'd be interesting You'd still see a bit of soil there. I don't think Nick had much mulch left after she'd done the trees. That could probably went a little bit thicker. I like to do mine thicker than that so you can't actually see any soil and it's about four inches thick. That's, that, that's once it's applied. When a rain comes down and compacts it down, it'd be no more than probably half an inch thick. But there's uh, probably a little bit more soil exposed there than I'd like. But that area over there, where that grass seed is, is ideal. Without going into it too much, there's several reasons why you want to cover up the bare soil. I've got several videos on it now, but predominantly you're trying to put that even layer across the top to stop, stop the sunlight getting to the surface of that soil and pulling or drawing the moisture out of the soil. With that on top, it regulates the temperature. And with the regulation of temperature, not allowing the sun to heat that soil up too much, you're also looking after your soil microbes because if you've let expose that soil, the soil microbes underneath are fully exposed. That soil would heat up and that temperature depth would go down into the soil, pushing your microbes deeper in the soil. So that helps regulate the temperature and also it definitely assists with germination. The more moisture you can retain in that soil, the better or the more percentage of germination, the higher germination you're gonna get. And if you don't cover the soil, mother nature is gonna throw up weeds to suit those soil conditions, whether you like it or not. All she wants is to be covered, not to be naked, thirsty, hungry, running a fever. She wants to be cool. So this is the area the seller had them in yesterday. So this was a graze for a 12 hour period by two animals. As you can see, you can notice down there, all that carbon thatch has been laid down. If you look at the photo up now, that's before they started. And that would have to be about three foot, three foot in height, all the way across this area. And currently, if you have a close look, there's probably a foot high in pasture left in areas. Optimally, what I'm trying to get the animals to do is graze a third, leave a third, and lay down a third. But that's all dependent on what you started with. Remember, this was three foot high. So I'd like them to graze two thirds and leave that one third, which is roughly that one foot. And that's roughly what I've got left now. You can see there's a foot standing. They've laid a heap down. And obviously I can't show you, but they would have grazed that two thirds off. They're lying down there. Obviously they've grazed a fair bit yesterday and overnight because they're content laying down, chewing their cud. Their four stomachs are doing the work and digesting all that grass 
which they've delivered to the rumen. I would normally run six animals on an area like this. Can you have the same effect with only a couple of animals? As you would, as if I was running the whole six at a higher stocking density. Yes, you can, I've just shown it here now. You don't need to have multiple hundreds of animals to have a high stocking density effect. What you need to do is like I've done here. From where that line is in front of me, that hot wire set up there, and this one here, up to the road here, that would generally be one area with six animals. I've reduced that by half and given it to two animals. That's the way you get your desired effect, is by either reducing the area for the amount of animals, or you can keep the same area and have the animals graze in there longer. With that being said, I wish to bring up a few points. I personally would never ever run less than two animals. Animals, especially cattle, are herding animal. They need companionship. If you were to run one cow, it would be very lonely. You're taking it out of its natural environment, running in a herd. It would be lonely and miserable. I know there's people that do it, but I'm not one and I would never do it. So I would use always a minimum of two. At least they've got the company. And like I said, you can leave that larger area for them to graze. I could have left them that whole area which I normally run six animals and left it a lot longer. The only issue you've got then is if you've got any seeded pasture, potentially they won't graze it. The bigger the area, the less competition between the two. They will go around and selectively graze around that pasture and generally lead the stuff that's come to seed, which is drained in energy, generally woodier alone and pick on the greener pasture which is higher in energy which is obviously higher in fluid higher in sugar and it takes less for the rumen to break down Cattle that'll know that they're going to always go for the easy solution and graze the higher in energy food before they go for that woody pasture so by reducing it like i've done to half you've made that competition now even tighter for the animals you'll see them in the paddock pushing each other around they try and get the best they pasture weeds. they can. And when if you were in a big paddock, not a hope. They would not touch that woody weeds. They'll selectively graze around it and overgraze everything else first. Generally speaking, it takes anywhere between 12 to 14 days for the cattle to graze across this two acres here on the trial property. And that's with six head of cattle. And after that 14 day period, we generally like to give it that 28 to 35 days recovery time. That gives time for this pasture to fully recover before we bring them back in. So currently with the two head of stock we've got at the moment, they're up to 39 days. And I've estimated there's roughly three days worth of grazing left. So it's taken them 42 days to get across the whole property. So that's well and truly up and above that 28 to 35 day recovery period that I'm after. I mentioned I like to give it 28 to 35 days recovery period. And I just said it's taken these animals, by the time they get around, it'll be 42 days. So what does that mean for my recovery period? It means that I'm ready to go straight back into the cell where I started from 42 days, 42 days ago and commence grazing recovery period. This is where they started 42 days ago. And they'll be going straight back into here once they finish the next two days worth of grazing. We're heading into our cooler months now. So the last few weeks, the growth rate has slowed down because it's not as hot and humid conditions. That's why it's important to have your stocking, stocking rate set for your conditions at the time. Hence why I've dropped the number of animals I bring on this property because I know the grass rate is slowing down. I couldn't have done this four years ago. I've done previous videos. We used to continually graze, the flat had been 100 mil of grass on the ground. There wouldn't have been enough to run one head for 42 days on this property, let alone back-to-back -back grazes. It's regenerative farming of building your armor, your thatch layer, and your organic material over time 
and holding the moisture and giving it 100% recovery has allowed me to do this. But on that note, I better head off and go have some lunch. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. Come on puppies, let's go for some lunch. <laughs>